Uh, one of the things we do on our farm operation every year is we soil sample. And uh, we soil sample every field. We've got some fields that we grid sample every year. And in particular, we uh, have got a uh, uh, somewhat of a research farm, I guess you would say, where we uh, grid sample uh, this field every year and we are making applications of, of pelletized lime, pell lime for short. Um, it's a field that we uh, started farming about um, 10 years ago and we were dealing with some very low pH uh, levels in this field. And I wanted to um, see how we could could bring up our pH values in that particular field uh, without, um, uh, you know, a big application of ag lime. Uh, working with a local uh, uh, crop consultant, we've kind of set up a 10-year uh, study on this particular farm where we apply 20, 250 to 350 pounds of pell lime uh, every year. And, um, and then we, of course, grid sample that field in the fall and uh, we've got some pretty interesting results off of this field going into our uh, eighth year uh, now. And what we're seeing is uh, our pH levels are coming up and we're also seeing our phosphorus levels come up without uh, any additional phosphorus applications. So what that's telling us is we're uh, increasing some mineralization, we're increasing some uh, availability of the phosphorus and uh, it's, it's being detected in our soil tests. Um, this particular field is, is strip-tilled and um, we're seeing some benefits of added uh, increased organic matter uh, in this field as well. So um, we're pretty excited at the end of 10 years uh, putting together all the data and, and uh, seeing you know, the, the end result. Um, so far we're, we've gone from pHs of upper fours to low fives to now we're all in the sixes in our grid samples. So um, looking, looking very favorable in that aspect. Uh, as I mentioned, we soil sample all of our fields. Um, we use that data, particularly the nitrate data, to um, uh, make a prescription for our nitrogen application in our strip till. And if, our, if we've got a field that's got some carryover nitrates in it, um, that comes right off the, the top of our um, baseline uh, rate that we use for nitrogen application. So for example, if we have 10 pounds equivalent of uh, nitrogen out in the field, uh, we'll subtract that off of a 160, 165 pound per acre application rate and apply that rate, uh, 150, 155 pounds. So we're seeing a savings by soil sampling every year and uh, utilizing that residual nitrogen that's in, that's in the soil. Um, strip tilling beans um, has not been an every year operation for us, but when we've done it, has, has showed some really promising results. Um, we strip till our beans, I hate to say it, but when we have time, um, our corn is priority uh, to strip till and, and to get our nutrients down. And there's been some years where we've strip tilled our fields that we plan to, to uh, plant to beans. And um, um, if nothing else, just for the uh, seed bed preparation. Um, adding nutrients, of course, would be a, a big benefit, but um, having the seed bed prep to get a, a very optimal stand of soybeans um, is, is, a, is our, our main goal. Um, with a lot of soil, snow during the winter and, of course, now moisture uh, ahead of planting time, our heavy corn residue holds the moisture. And with our clay soils, it's very tough for that to dry out underneath all that, that, that matter residue. So we kind of have to trick Mother Nature into um, getting that soil dried. We uh, you know, either have to use vertical tillage or strip till uh, to, to prep that seed bed and, and provide a, uh, a favorable environment for, for soybean emergence.